Welcome to Worldview Matters, discussing controversial issues, discerning current events, defending biblical Christianity. No topic off limits. And now, here's your host, David Fiorazzo. Hey, friends, thanks so much for tuning in, for sharing the podcast, and we uh, can't wait to get to our guest today. We're talking about persecution. The organization is called International Christian Concern, and we've got Jeff King with us. We'll introduce him in a minute, but it is fundraising season, and we are raising money for the next six months. We are a nonprofit, so any donation you give is tax deductible. But I want to just thank uh, some friends from Tennessee, Carol, um, Patrick in Connecticut, Joe from Wisconsin, Bud from Ohio, Steve from New Mexico, Peggy from Minnesota, Pamela from Michigan. We could go on and on, but thank you guys so very much. It's your support that keeps us going, as uh, most nonprofits can say. We appreciate you. So, um, also, we have an opportunity to expand our reach with the help of Pioneer Network, Beck TV, and God's Learning Channel. And if you have not already donated and you are able to, financially. Um, we just ask that you'd consider uh, a gift of either $200, and that's a one-time gift. You can get this book from Alex Newman. It's called Indoctrinating Our Children to Death. I have two copies. He signed one of them. Every one of these we send out will be autographed by Dr. not Dr. Uh, Alex Newman. And uh, I've got a book, Assault on the Image of God. If you'd prefer that one, I'll sign that for you and send that out. $25 a month if you're able to give that. We would love to send these to you. For first time, donors get this mug worldview matters and on one side the other side is my trademark keep speaking the truth about things that matter go to worldviewmatters.tv and you can give and again it's tax deductible so jeff king is one of the world's leading experts on religious freedom and he's the president of icc international christian concern the website is persecution.org O-R-G, persecution.org. He's traveled to more than 70 countries. He's been interviewed or quoted by interviewed or quoted by a lot of media outlets, including the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Fox, BBC, CBN, and many, many others, too, ma too many to mention here. But he loves to teach the secrets of spiritual growth derived from the hidden world of martyrs and those who have been persecuted. He's the author of Islam Uncensored, Last Words of the Martyrs, and he actually has a new devotional out. It's called The Whisper. If you want to check that out, it's on Amazon. The Whisper, Lessons of Renewal, Whispered from the Prisons of the Persecuted. So again, that's Jeff King. You can look him up. Jeff, brother, so good to connect with you. David, great to be with you. Yeah, great to see you. So let's start with just an uh, overview of ICC, uh, International Christian Concern. I know you've been around since, I think, 95. How long have you been with them, and uh, what have you guys been up to? Well, let's see. I've been around 20-some years, uh, called through a miraculous dream. We serve the persecuted overseas, and we kind of do it in three primary ways. So first of all, as you can imagine, we do a whole bunch of bandaging. Uh, and that means, you know, lives, bodies, uh, repairing buildings, pastor gets killed, we take care of his family. Mm -hmm. And that's the bandaging, but we also build. So we build the church in the toughest places in the world. And that can be through uh, pushing out scriptures or uh, underground pastors or even beaming the gospel into North Korea. So that's our overseas work. We work on Capitol Hill. We work with senators and congressional representatives, State Department, and sometimes the administration, depending on who's in there. And, uh, and then I do a whole bunch of this work with awareness and just trying to get the world and the church to understand what's happening to the persecuted uh, overseas. Um, we, we can get as political as we want on this podcast, and I often do. Um, and I have a problem with the lack of awareness that I think a lot of people have in the current administration, the Biden administration. They certainly are not helping out when it comes to other countries and the persecution of Christians, especially in places of, of like Nigeria. I think you wrote about something over at uh, on the website about the Nicaragua. Talk about that. And, and is there anything other than contacting our representatives, our senators or congressmen? Is there anything the average Christian can can do to raise awareness about this? Because our administration doesn't seem to be as interested in uh, helping persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah, well, and you brought up Nigeria, David. Let's talk about Nigeria. Most people have very little idea what's going on, but I would say Nigeria is, is probably 
uh, the the most dangerous place to be a Christian. And, and it, it's it's slightly different than North Korea, but oh my gosh, look, since the turn of the century, we've seen uh, upwards of maybe 100,000 Christians murdered. And, you know, so that's just in the last 20 some years. Uh, and then a, another 3 million Christians have had their farms stolen. And they, they were, they're killed, they're decimated, the, fa- the lands are stolen by Islamists. Uh, that are terrorists, but they're aided and abetted by the government. You can't prove that in a courtroom, but I can tell you that's what's going on after watching and learning and and listening to plenty of Nigerians for a long time. Um, So a massive, massive problem. Uh, Somehow the government seems completely incompetent. They're not. They never arrest anybody. They never go after the perpetrators. They show up afterwards and say, my, what a terrible thing. We're going to have to do something about this. And with the U.S. government, they say, my gosh, this is such a hard problem. It's such a uh, tough foe. These are guerrilla fighters. And if you send us more money for uh, military aid, perhaps we could do something. But nothing ever happens. Mm. Yeah, money is rarely the answer, because as we've seen here in America, it doesn't get to the people that need it. It's the government or corrupt officials and Nigeria, Africa. Um, And a lot of other countries handle that the same way. But, uh, Jeff, you've got a portion of your website under Take Action over at persecution.org. Petition, there's jobs, volunteer, a letter writing campaign, uh, give monthly, there's internships. Tell us about one or two you might want to highlight for people that really don't know how they could get involved. Yeah, well, the first thing, and, and honestly, you asked me that question before, I really didn't follow up, so apologies. But the first thing is that people need to get informed. And it's like, look, the, the press isn't going to talk about this. The press right. is ho- the press is hostile, as you know. Yep. Uh, the press, when they do studies, they're very liberal. They're hostile towards Christianity. So this yep. is not going to be of interest to them uh, unless it's some kind of major, uh, major attack or there's some geopolitical overlay. They're not going to cover it. And so then the pastors uh, are often uh, ill-informed. And then so the, the the average Christian in the pew, again, they're not hearing it. They're not educated. So the first thing is to get educated. We put out a magazine called Persecution. So people will understand what's going on. In their, and then our website, we're pushing out news every day with what's going on uh, so that people will, first of all, understand and be alerted to what's going on. And then they can... They can call members, uh, they can call embassies, that's highly effective, Uh, but the first thing is to get informed. And there's such a lack of information out there. And then, as you said, the the media certainly is not going to take up the cause of the the biblical worldview or Christians, true Christians, I should say. Let's talk about some of the information I got when I was, you know, having planning to have you on the podcast is what happened with ISIS and the terror attack that was thwarted in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And uh, this guy, Alexander Scott Mercurio, was very open and blatant about what he was intending to do. Uh, just talk to us about what happened and, and how ICC got involved. Well, we were following, you know, we've seen this kind of thing for a long time. You know, when I got involved with the organization 20 years ago, I had to answer for myself, what is going on with Islam? Islam was the story with persecution. It used to be the old Marxist states, but then Islam really was the forerunner and the the primary cause of persecution around the world. So I had to I had to study for a long time and understand what was going on with Islam uh, to to answer this, the question of persecution. So there's, they poured a lot of money into radicalizing the world's Muslims, into putting lots of radical content out of the web, raising up uh, uh, young jihadists in madrasas, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, this young man was, um, he was uh, absorbing content online and then was in touch uh, with uh, different uh, ISIS elements and was raising funds and then felt um, he felt like he wasn't doing enough for the cause and decided to attack his local church in his town and had it planned out. Now, luckily, uh, the once he got to that stage, he was actually talking to people in the FBI, uh, but very serious. He had made a, a, you know, a final video. They arrested him the night before he had planned the attack. Uh, wow. I think it was on April 6th, and he was planning for, for an attack on April 7th. On churches. Um, a lot of church know, in his town, yeah. 
Uh, we've seen, I mean, uh, you, we can look at both, the, just the Judeo-Christian worldview. We can look at Jews, we can look at Christians. They're not just hostile toward the Jews, because we've heard a lot since, you know, Hamas attacked Israel last October 7. But there's a lot of information out there that if they were open about a lot of people, a lot of them are saying, have you heard the expression, the Saturday people first, the Sunday people next, meaning yeah. they're going to go after the Saturday worshipers, the Jews, and then they're going to go after the Christians because we are the obstacle to Islam being spread, being radicalized, and because there's a hatred. And what we see it's in the media, it's being stirred up in Hollywood. The constant, I mean, I, I don't understand the fact that they're getting away with some of this rhetoric uh, Jeff, um, but yet since the Israel Gaza war, now we see it on our own college campuses, and it's not going to stop there. Yeah. So your concerns, um, I think, this should have been a the back to Iowa or Idaho, that should have been something that raised a lot of red flags and, and alarm bells should have gone off, but they didn't really. We're back to business as usual. Um, that should have been something that was kind of like a wake up call. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I would totally agree. And it, it is disconcerting. What's going on? Why won't the press pick up on this? And one of the things I can think of is that the enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? Mm. Um, and so the average liberal has no idea what they're dealing with, with radical Islam. Um, and you you mentioned the, the rise in protests in the top schools, even mm -hmm. the Ivy League schools. Yep. Fascinating story again, and you can trace it back. There's a whole bunch of money from the Gulf, from the Saudis, and from Qatar that is flowing to the top universities to the tune of about a billion dollars a year. And a lot of that is going into the Middle East Studies programs. They've kind of hijacked those departments around the country. And when you're giving out that kind of money, you have a whole lot of influence, a whole lot of say in what should be taught, what teachers should be hired, uh, you know, m m my gosh, was, doesn't this teacher look great? Wouldn't it be great to have on your campus? You know, of course, our gift is not dependent on that, but this sure would be a great thing. Well, what do you think uh, the school administrators are going to do? Absolutely. And this is what's happened in the Middle East Studies departments across the country and especially in the top schools. Uh, the Again, the Saudis and the, the government in Qatar are funding this. They've done it for 20 years. And the scary thing is that the universities are hiding it uh, and purposefully hiding it, that this is money coming in from honestly hostile governments. Yeah, I got some information on what you're talking about. And uh, the Gatestone Institute reported on this dark yep. money nightmare, yep. uh, how yeah, Cutter, Cutter bought the Ivy League. And it says yep. approximately $13 billion in undocumented contributions from foreign governments. Yeah. Came in, and this is. I mean, I guess it shouldn't surprise us because it's we've seen this in politics, we've seen this just in yeah. corporations and the just the dark money. But, um, we've got to take a brief pause again, friends. We were with Jeff King, president of ICC International Christian Concern. We'll be right back on Worldview Matters. Introducing Patriot Mobile, the wireless carrier that stands with you. We are committed to supporting the values that make our nation great. With affordable plans and reliable nationwide coverage, Patriot Mobile is not just a wireless service. It's a call to action for those who believe in the American dream. Because this year is not just any year. It's the most important year since our nation's founding. Choose a wireless carrier that shares your values. Choose Patriot Mobile. Get free activation now with promo code David. We appreciate Harbinger's Daily, Patriot Mobile. And if you know someone who might be interested in sponsoring Worldview Matters, send our producer an email. Simply go to uh, worldviewmatters.tv or the actual email address is worldviewmatters at fpeusa.org and he'll get right back to you. So thank you. Um, Jeff King is with us, International Christian Concern. Persecution.org is the website. Now, um, let's go back to the money. I know there's another story I wanted to talk to. I wanted to go over to Finland. But um, there's an interesting quote in that, the information I got here, what's being taught is bought. The money that's coming in and that's going to 
uh, some of the American Ivy League schools. I mean, I look at these programs, uh, Cornell. I mean, whatever you'd like to share on that, because I think still a lot of people are not willfully ignorant. They just don't know it wouldn't be in the news because they're not reporting what's happening behind the scenes at the university level. They've been really hijacked by the left and it has been that way for decades. Uh, share your thoughts on, on the money and how we can be more aware of what's happening there. Well, and the left is one thing, but radical Islam is a whole different thing, and, right? And China and other... And China. Yeah. yeah. And of course, China's working beyond the university. They're stealing technology. They're buying influence. They are buying votes in D.C., funneling money into K Street. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, you know, the the saying democracy is a terrible form of government comes to mind, but it's just better than all the rest. <laughs> so but this, this is always a, a part and parcel of democracy. And you wish our intel agencies were stronger on this. But yeah. So a, a phrase I know you're a fan of, David, follow the money, right? <laughs> if there's a financial incentive, just look at what's going on. If you're seeing this kind of craziness and it all starts suddenly and after Hamas goes in and slaughters over a thousand innocents and then you see this craziness all erupt at the same time and you see the same placards and the same sayings. Well, then you have to got you have to wonder. And then again, you follow the money. And, you know, we became aware of this uh, more than a decade ago. We were seeing this. Uh, with Georgetown, with different places. That was kind of when the beginning, uh, maybe about 15 years ago, when the Saudi money was flowing in. And and uh, and we couldn't put all of it together. It's like, you know, they're buying influence, but where does this lead? Now we see where it's leading. Now, the irony is that, again, they're buying, they've really co-opted the Middle East Studies programs. And the irony is that these programs, these departments were studied, were started by the Pentagon, by the intel agencies in this country, because we wanted to develop uh, smarts. We wanted to develop scholars that had an understanding of the Middle East. And we, we were fairly ignorant at the time. So they built these departments and now foreign governments have basically come in and co-opted them and taken them over. Wow, it is absolutely astounding. People are basically being told, don't believe your eyes and what's happening. Um, they, they, they have all these signs, right? Professionally made banners. And what about the tents being put up on universities? They're, yeah. they're all like these same exact. I mean, this is not an organic, spontaneous Follow protest. Follow the money. Excellent point, Jeff King. Um, there's an article on your website if you want to shift gears slightly about someone yeah. I wrote about, Dr. Pavi Razanin. And this is called yeah. Christian Parliamentarian Faces Third her third criminal trial for so-called or alleged hate speech over in Finland. There's you standing with her. And um, you, why did you decide to have this story over at persecution.org? Well, I am uh, such a fan of Ivy. Um, she's actually been in my home. Uh, what an incredibly brave woman. She is simply a Christian MP. So for us, a congresswoman. 20 some year congresswoman. She simply tweeted something uh, about the Finnish church supporting a gay pride march, kind of like, what is going on? Well, that's all it took for basically the Finnish Justice Department, the head of the Justice Department to go after her and to say that uh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna lock you up for this. And she, she sent the police to do an investigation. The police look at this and the police, honestly, you know, the European, they can't, even, they can't even figure this out. You're a Christian. What is this all about? And they're like, well, we don't understand it, but there's no crime here. Doesn't matter. Justice Department, so-called Justice Department, moves ahead to uh, sue her in court, bring, her to, uh, bring charges against her, uh, exonerated in, in court. The charges are dropped. Guess what happens? Prosecutor, the chief prosecutor for the nation goes after again, third time. So, look, the strategy is it doesn't matter if you win or lose. And this is a case where radicals have, uh, you know, taken the reins of government and are using them for their own purposes, for their own politics, not for mm -hmm. justice. And they can punish her. They can grind her into the ground. They can bankrupt her. Um, so that's the point. The process yeah. is the punishment. And we see the same thing. Look, and the clear message, just like here, the clear message is you better keep your head down, keep your mouth shut if you're a Christian, keep your head down, and above all, be nice. That's your job as a Christian. Be nice and get out of the public square. You don't belong here. Now, David, guess where we see that happen 
uh, overseas, China, uh, the Islamic states. So out of one side of their mouth, they say, we have religious freedom. On the other hand, they say, you're not allowed to share with anybody. You can't share Bibles. You can't share your thoughts. uh, You can't share your faith. You just keep it to yourself. And then we have no problem. That's what we're seeing. That's where Christians have to wake up. That's what we're seeing in the West and even in the States. Yeah, we've, we are seeing that. And what I've called it, I've called it out, it is communist policy in America when you, when you weaponize the justice system or the FBI or when you put out your ideology, your talking points, your marching orders, uh, and then you censor the other side or you sup- suppress or punish the yeah. opposition, meaning biblical yeah. Christians. Um, but her case is fascinating because I think they're trying to make an example out of her. Would you agree Absolutely. with that? And, and they want to just, <laughs> right, teach, teach, teach Christians what they better not do. And you said something very important, influence. They want to keep Christian influence behind church doors so we are not out in society in the public square Monday through Saturday. Just, you know, yeah, you're okay to go in there on Sunday. Um, but this is what they're trying to do with her. I wrote about this uh, last year, and basically the, the history behind this, I, do, I did an article, there it is, over at Harbinger's Daily. She was just simply talking about marriage between one man yeah. and one woman and sharing her views, yeah. and she was frustrated. Jeff, I know you know the story because you know her well, because her yeah. church wasn't talking about it so she spoke up and i think a lot of people watching this podcast can relate their pastors are not addressing these issues so they feel like they've got to talk about it your thoughts on that 100 percent agree and and look you know this is in some ways it's it's a little exciting again this is what we see with the dictator and the despot overseas and where not what i observe overseas is that persecution uh, if if there's any lesson, it's persecution galvanizes the church. It drives out the weak. All those who are in church looking for mates or looking for business contacts, and there's a whole bunch of that, or just to be around nice people, they all go away. And what what we desperately need is, is a people, a Christian people that are truly dependent on the Lord, that are truly connected with them. And that's what happens with persecution. And where that flows Uh, that's an unstoppable church. That's the church that grows the fastest, and that's overseas. So these are, these days are, you know, they really call for people of courage, and and there's going to be a a winnowing of the flock. And so people who don't belong in the church really need to get out, but those who belong, if you are a true Christian, you just have to, you just have to kind of pull up your britches and say, look, this is what the Lord called us to. He said, we're a revolutionary movement. We are, unfortunately, because we're linked with him, we're a stop sign to the world. And so what do you think? How is the world going to react? The, the, the answer is not to be nice. That's not the problem. The problem is we're linked with Christ. We're linked with God. And the world has a problem with both, both God and the Son. But we are linked with him. We cannot hide. And we dare not hide his message. We are the salt. We need to spread it. Amen. Big amen. Bold face, underline, exclamation point, Jeff. Oh. Thank you. Preach it, brother. I mean, over in Acts chapter 5, they were told not to teach in the name of Jesus, and they filled Jerusalem with the doctrine. Perfect. They were accused of uh, the intending to bring th- the blood of Jesus, this man's blood on us. How did Peter and the apostles respond? We must obey God rather than men. Amen. And so I'm going to give you an opportunity here because— uh, we we don't have this connection of, of reality like these Christians that are suffering persecution in other countries are our family. There are brothers and sisters. Yeah. We identify with Christ. These are our family members. We're going to be, spend eternity with them. So we don't have that connection, but it's going. It's already on our shores. We're going to see more of it. I want you yeah. to, to share whatever is on your heart and your thoughts to encourage those of us who are— some people are overwhelmed by this, Jeff, by this, what's happening in North America, in the West, uh, especially in the U.S., where persecute, where Christians are being discriminated against, and we're seeing it blatantly, openly, proudly. And I think people need to know how to respond, and they need some encouragement because it's it's going to get worse, probably. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it, it sure looks like it. Well, let me say, anybody who's discouraged, I completely understand. You know, when I landed at ICC, I opened up the files and started going country by country 
to understand persecution. Wow. I can't, I can't tell you. Mm, I can't tell you what I saw. Beheadings, horror. Now you do that for 20 years, and I'll tell you what, you can get discouraged. And for a lot of years I was. Hmm. And and I'd say, look, I'm a student of the scriptures and I trust the Lord. I trust the scriptures. I, I'm a student of prophecy. And I say, I know the church wins. I know we win in the end. I know that I know he wins. Amen. But how can it be? We are we are sheep and we are among wolves and we're torn and, and shredded and attacked and we're defenseless. And then I began to understand and I saw the sweep of history and I saw the dynamic of persecution and what it does to the church. This I gave you just a piece of it how it it will push out the weak it'll push out the double-minded it'll it'll push out uh those who are more interested in the world what we desperately need what the lord's doing with our troubles and with our sufferings each of us is he's trying to get us to give up on the world and to cling more tightly to him and let his power flow through us so there's no reason to be discouraged if you look back at church history it's as clear as day nothing can defeat his church. Temporarily, yes, but in the end, nothing can defeat his church. I'm telling you, these are exciting days. And it just calls for for us to have a heart of courage. And that's what he gives us from above. He will put that into our heart. And we need to get back to what the church is supposed to be doing. And that is evangelism and discipleship. Mm -hmm. All the churches have lost it. So you call, you start in your your church. Don't wait for your pastor. Go out. Around you are the dead and the dying. You need to bring them the love of Christ and the message of salvation and then teach them how to be a believer and teach them to go reach others. Amen, brother. We need a better understanding of being ambassadors for Christ and the gospel must go forth. And it will. And it will. And uh, truth wins. Christ wins. He's already victorious. And we are here for such a time as this. I appreciate you just sharing that. That must have been really hard to look at these stories of these innocent people that are, are uh, killed or are tortured for their faith, just for what they believe and, and uh, what we have, the truth of Jesus Christ and the hope that we have. So great perspective today. I want to encourage people to check out your devotional, The Whisper. Um, it's built around the stories of persecuted believers. That's on Amazon, friends. And again, uh, Jeff King's website, Christian Persecution, um, over at uh, persecution.org. International Christian Concern ICC. We appreciate your time. Lord willing, we'll do this again, Jeff. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. All right. Friends, uh, share this, please. God bless you. And as always, keep speaking the truth about things that matter.